Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a couple of what I would say as stories from the front. If you listen to this program in its entirety when it's coming out over the radio airwaves, you'll you'll hear the commercials that we are running these days. And we talk about people overpaying for underperforming advice. And we really do think that that is a pretty significant in just issue in the financial services industry as a whole. And that's why it's so important that investors should know exactly what they are paying. And, and, and what's happened is over the course of the years, the financial services industry always like to kind of stay one step ahead of the investing public. And the biggest thing that they've done is they've sort of bifurcated various costs and expenses. And, and so it leaves investors and clients not really understanding exactly what they are paying for. And so we're gonna give you two stories from the front. And here's the thing, and, and, and the reality is that both of these stories hit on the same day this past weekend. It's one of those things where, you know, every week we're thinking of what we can talk about on the radio program, doing some, a lot of preparation work, certainly the team at Nelson Financial Planning, constantly giving me articles and things to, to, to really kind of talk about so that every week we can come to you with a new and exciting and informative, hopefully, show. And this, these two stories coincided on the same day within like the space of two hours. And I'm like, this is something we got to continue to bring up on the program. It's important to know your expenses. The notion of what's going on in the industry to bifurcate the expenses, to have those be a separate subtraction or a separate invoice. And you forget that there's two parts of it because that might be one part, but then there's the expenses of the underlying the underlying investments themselves. So let's begin with story one from the front lines of dealing with folks that ultimately come to us for help on a regular basis. So here's story one. This involves a large brokerage firm. Obviously we will not disclose the name of said firm, but it's a big one. And the discussion that we had with this individual uh, when we were reviewing the, the statements that, that he provided, we discovered, and he did as well because he actually didn't know, that he was paying a cost of 2% per year, not including the expenses of the underlying investments that he had, just a straight cost of 2% on top of the expenses of the underlying investment. And so we're sitting there talking, going through it, and I'm looking at the actual numbers, and this gentleman, no idea, no idea that he was paying that. And the guy who was his advisor had been a friend for like 20 years. And, and, and so that was part of the conversation. He's like, you know, I just I was coming here to just kind of have you check in, take advantage of, you know, sort of the free consultations that we offer when folks come, uh, come, in, come to Nelson Financial Planning for, for a conversation. And I just, you know, just wanted to kind of take an eyeball on it. And, and you know, this, he, we were talking about it, he's like, oh, this has been a friend for a long time. And, you know, and the, the, the reality is he just didn't have any idea. So he, he leaves and, and, he, and he calls said friend at large brokerage firm. And he says, um, hey, hey, buddy, old pal, um, how much are you charging me? And the guy took a minute and looked it up and said, oh, we are charging you 2%. <laughs> so so now, now it's confirmed from the source that it was 2% per year. And here's the crazy thing. The guy then says, oh, let me reduce that down to, to, to 1%. Let, let me take the two down, down, down to one. So, so the, the individual that visited with me call, was calling to say, hey, thanks for saving me $10,000 a year. And I said, well, that, you know, that's great. I'm happy to, 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 to do that. Always happy to help. Uh, you know, just good business. And whether or not that individual becomes a client or not, I mean, that, that's fine. We understand long relationships. But I guess it underscores the point of it, you better ask that question, okay? Because here we have an individual, 20 year relationship, and even the person that he was working with was surprised that it was still at that high of a level 
and then proceeded to instantaneously reduce the cost, saving the saving this individual ten thousand dollars a year in costs. What's significant about that is he didn't know. Clearly, he was being overcharged. Bottom line, at least he got some savings thanks to a conversation with us, so that's good. But at the end of the day, as I was, you know, we were kind of wrapping up the conversation, I said, um, maybe you should ask for a refund for like the past two, three years or so, and then you could have gone and gotten, you know, like a, like a new car with that, I mean, at the end of the day. I mean, that's the kind of dollars that we're talking about. So that's story one. That's pretty significant, don't you think? Here's another one. Story number two. Again, stories from the front of why investors need to understand what their costs are and how all of the costs associated with any type of investment advice that you're getting are in fact being charged. Here we go. This is another large firm. This is a commonality in a bunch of large firms, right? Uh, the charge was 1%. Okay, all right, reasonable. But the account was sitting 30% in cash. Okay, wait a minute. And this one had an invoice. This was one of those invoice ones, right? So, so here's the invoice. We look at the invoice with her. It, it shows the charge. It's showing, you know, the 1%. So it's 0.25% per quarter. And it's calculating based upon the value of the accounts. So and it's showing the full value of the accounts. Meanwhile, we're looking at the actual statement. And the actual statement shows that you're 30% in cash. And it wasn't a situation where, oh, they were gonna move that money, they were gonna trade that money. The account had not changed in years, folks. So it wasn't like they had just sold something and maybe they were sitting in cash or cash and they were gonna buy it. No, account had not changed in years, getting charged 1% on an account that had 30% in cash. That's just not justifiable in any way, shape, or form, in our opinion. Getting charged that amount of money on cash just does not make sense. Two stories from the front, all hitting within a, just probably three, three hours this past Monday that we wanted to take a moment and share with y'all because as much information is out there, as much conversation is about what investors are being charged, the industry does a great job at really trying to hide the ball. So. Bottom line, make sure you ask that question this week of wherever it is that you're doing business with to get a handle and an understanding on exactly what it is. And don't let them just tell you one part. There are two parts. There's the part you pay and there's the expenses of the investments themselves. Make sure you're taking those two parts and adding them together to come up with your total cost. At the end of the day, if that number is more than one and a half percent, expenses plus the fee, you're paying too much. Period. End of story. Make sure you're checking into that. Make sure you're adding it up and have a good handle on what exactly those expenses are. All right. We'll take a deep breath. As you can see, I'm kind of fired up about that because I don't like seeing people getting overcharged or charged for things that there's no way they're ever going to make money, right? You shouldn't charge 1% on cash. It's ridiculous. We're going to go to another topic. And we're going to bring in our associate, Kristen Cayley, our fellow certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning, CPA as well. Hopefully I don't get that riled up on the next topic, but I fear I might because it's taxes. And it's the changes that are percolating in the Washington pot of poo that ultimately is going to affect every American. I don't care what they say. Taxes have a tendency to get passed on to everybody. So we're gonna be talking about that on the next segment of the program. There's a lot of speculation, a lot of conversation about what some of those tax changes are. I think we're starting to maybe see what they might be. I understand that all of this is still proposed, but it's important to say, wait a minute, if the writing's on the wall and there's maybe some things that I can do now to, to, to help, eh, maybe I should do something about it, right? So we're going to do that coming up next here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garrison, Nelson Financial Partner.